Hi everyone, thank you for attending this talk. I'm Virginie Marquez, I just finished my PhD at the University of Montpellier, and I'll present here some of the work I did during uh, my PhD. So I'll present GAPI DNA, Assessing and Mapping Global Species Gaps in Genetic Databases for Metabore Coding Studies. DNA-based inventories using Metabore Coding use DNA information to identify community composition. It could be from bulk samples, where we take the individuals themselves, mix them up, and then uh, retrieve the species present uh, by using their DNA. Or it could also be from eDNA, so we sample directly the environment without the individuals themselves, and we identify the species present from the DNA traces present in the, uh, in the environment. We've seen an increased importance in the last 10 years of DNA-based inventory methods, for eDNA, you have here the results of the number of papers uh, published over the years, which are, which are getting higher every year. Uh, there's a large breadth of groups that can be surveyed with DNA-based methods. You have here the results for eDNA. Most of the group surveys are vertebrates, and among them, most of them are fish. DNA-based inventory start with the sampling, either from environmental samples for eDNA or multiple specimens from, for both samples. We sample, we extract the DNA, we PCR amplify it, and then we sequence the barcode. From the list of barcode sequence, we use bioinformatic and a reference database to identify the species present in the mix. So ideally, we would have this. In theory, uh, each barcode would, would have a, a species match. But in reality, we have something a bit different where it's hard to find a species for every sequence and some of your sequence will be completely unknown, and some of them you can match maybe a genus or family, but you cannot have the species information. And that's because there's a lack of species coverage in genetic databases. It's an important problem for scaling up the DNA-based inventories at the global scale. Some work has been done to quantify those gaps in genetic reference databases. We can cite uh, the work done by Wigan et al. in 2019, where they surveyed a large uh, number of taxonomic groups all over Europe, and they uh, quantified the gaps in genetic databases. They found that the gaps were highly different depending on the taxonomic group. You have here the variation among different groups. Uh, and they found that there were more gaps for the diatoms and invertebrates. You have here a map for crustacea, and you can see that the percentage of coverage are rather low all over Europe. That's a great body of work, but it's only in Europe, so you cannot scale it up to global scale, and you cannot easily access the species list for each of those group to see which species is sequenced and which is not. It's not made to be updated with the progresses of the database completion over the years. Some of the questions we can ask is at the global scale, how is it uh, structured? Where, is the, where are the most gaps? Where do we need to sequence a lot? Uh, we can also wonder what about the threatened species and non-indigenous species eDNA is a great method to um, identify this kind of species in the environment, which are hard to sample with other methods. But if we don't have the DNA in the reference databases, we cannot identify them. So we need to know where the gaps are so that we can fill them up and scale up DNA uh, analysis. We can also wonder if a species is theoretically amplified by a primary pair, because if it's present in a genetic database, it doesn't mean that your primary pair is able to amplify it. So for this, I developed a web application called GAPI DNA. It's coded in R using the package Shiny, and it's showing database coverage for a given taxa and a primary pair especially. For the moment, there are only uh, marine fish and freshwater fish as taxa available. So the app looks like this. We'll go into more details uh, shortly. So it's accessible on the link here. You can also take a picture of the QR code and then you show it to your camera of your computer and then it takes you right to the, uh, to the link to the website. So this work is part of a paper that will be published soon. And before uh, going to the website of Gaffy DNA, I will uh, show you how the data is generated to be fed into the app. So first we start with the literature review on Web of Science and we look for the list of primers that amplify fish using metabore coding. So we have here the complete list of primers of this study. We have 23 prim fish primers. What we do then is we automatically screen NCBI ENA uh, with each one of those uh, primer pair. We need automatic screening because of the large quantities of data involved. 
we used for this eco PCR with three mismatch allowed. This gives us a list of amplified species for each primal pair. We can match this list of amplified species to global spatial checklists, which are lists where you can see in this where in which area of the world we have which community composition for fish I have here the sources. And if we merge these two informations together, we can obtain specialized species maps coverage. So we know in each area of the world how many percent of the of the community is uh, present in reference databases. And we have this kind of map for each combination of primary parent taxonomic group. So as a, as a result, a small demo of GAPI DNA. So here the QR code again, I will go straight to the website. So the website looks like this. It's interactive, you can go around. And here you have a small box where you can choose what you want to print. So we choose the taxon, we can choose marine or freshwater fish, we'll stay on marine. Then you can choose a taxon, uh, geographic resolution. So if I go on the world, I have a single big polygon, but I will go to ecoregion. That way we can see the variation across the world. We can choose a mitochondrial position, I'll stay on the 12S, and we can choose a primary pair, we'll go to Kelly, for instance. And then we can go around, it's interactive, we can zoom in as well. And here you have the name of the ecoregion and the percentage of a species sequenced. It says here that you can click on the polygon and then to display the list of corresponding species uh, that you can find in this area. So I'll click, for example, on the Red Sea. And we have here the table with all the species that are present according to the checklist. And we can filter, depending if you want only the sequence species or the not sequence species. You can filter by EUCN status as well, showing only, for example, endangered and vulnerable species here. You can also filter by species name. Here I can print all the Lujana species. And then you can download this table and open it in a, in a software. It's a CSV file. So here I open it and I can visualize the entire table. So that's it for the app. You can now go back to the presentation. And we can wonder. Uh, what patterns do we see for fishes using the data that are present in GAPI DNA? So I'll shortly present the special heterogeneity of the global scale for fishes. I print here only two primers, one on the 12S and one on the 16S. And here we have the percentage of species sequence according to latitude here and according to the number of species present uh, in, the, in the region here with the colors. So we can see that for the 12S, there's not much uh, influence of latitude on the percentage of species sequenced. But on the contrary, for the 16S, we have a clear U-shaped relationship where the um, region located around the tropics have more species, but are also less sequenced compared to the, uh, to the other regions. For freshwater species, I show only one primary pellet on the 12S, and we have the same kind of U-shaped relationship where the tropics have way less species sequence than all the other regions. If we look now at the threatened species for all fish primary pairs, uh, we see here the result by a uh, mitochondrial gene. And we see that the threatened fish species are more sequenced than the least uh, concerned ones for, for marine fishes, but still it's always under 50%. So that's not a lot of, uh, that's not a lot of species. For the freshwater ones, it's even worse where we have the threatened species that are less sequenced than the other ones. So for the 12S, for instance, for all primer pairs, we have a, not a single one has over 25% of threatened species sequence. For the 16S, it's not even uh, over 50% either. So the threatened fish species are globally not well sequenced. We can then wonder where are those uh, threatened species uh, located spatially. If we look for marine species, they are located all around the tropics uh, with a focus on the Caribbean. For the freshwater ones, it's mostly on the big basins located in the tropics, uh, with an exception of the Mississippi here, which has over 60 threatened, uh, but not sequenced species. In summary, for the most study taxonomic group using eDNA fishes, we can see that species coverage in genetic databases is rather limited, especially for the tropics. Even though there is the most species present in the tropics, 
we can see also that species coverage for threatened species is largely insufficient. We have less than 50% of all fish species present in a reference database at the moment. The GAPI DNA app is a free and open access tool which can help visualize species coverage and is updated yearly with the database's release. It's also easily expanded with any taxonomy group and if the data is available. So for this, I need special checklist and a list of primary pair. And with this information, it can be added to the app uh, easily. A few limits I can cite is that there's no data if the primary sequence is not submitted on NCBI. So if you design a reference database, you submit the sequence and you don't submit the primary sequence, it's not possible to extract it using uh, in CD core PCR and automatically. So there's a few sequences that are missed due to this problem. There's also no data if the species is not present on any checklist, because if, if it's too rare or uh, unknown, you don't know where it is. If it's not present on checklist, there's no way to know where it lives. In silico amplifications also does not mean it could be amplified in a real life sample. So that has a link with the primer design and it's out of scope for this work. There's also no information on the taxonomic resolution of primer pair, but that's something that's uh, interesting and it's also a problem for DNA-based uh, inventories. So that's something I consider adding in the future, maybe on the app. A few prospective and future developments that I see uh, for the app at short term is to allow the extraction of sequence information. That's something that was suggested by a reviewer of the paper and that I found useful. So I created a pen here. Uh, it's not coded yet, but that's something I want to implement. Another development we can see is adding more taxa. The next one will be the contriction in amphibian, but the goal is to add as much as possible. Thank you for listening. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.